pensions and other post employment benefits pensions and other post employment benefits give rise to non current liabilities reported by many companies the question you might be wondering here is what is the link between pension and liability the point here is that we are talking about non current liabilities if i am a company and i have lots of employees and i have promised certain benefits to my employees that is a obligation on me the company and obviously if it is an obligation i need to record that obligation one of the most significant post employment benefits is pension and a typical pension would be where a company says to its employees that when you retire then a certain percentage of your income will be paid to you as pension for the rest of your life or for x number of years whatever the terms might be they will be defined in the contract between the employee and the company but these are obligations that the company has and therefore needs to show it as a liability we will focus on pension with pensions you need to recognize that there are two broad categories you can either have a defined contribution plan or a defined benefit plan in a defined contribution plan the company contributes an agreed upon amount to the plan so agreed upon essentially is where the defined is coming in from a accounting standpoint this is easy for the company why because whatever the agreed upon amount is that is contributed every period and that amount is shown as a expense on the cash flow side that is shown as a operating outflow because essentially this is a compensation it's like a just like salary is a compensation a pension contribution or a defined contribution is also considered a operating cash flow sometimes if the payment is not made in a given period it's made in the next period there might be a short term liability but by and large whatever the contribution is needs to be shown as a expense for the period accounting wise very simple and essentially the the risk is transferred to the employee over here because the company is saying that i'm going to pay this much into your plan and then if the plan does well that's good for the employee if the plan does badly it's bad for the employee so the company is washing its hands of the risk and just as a general point these plans are becoming much more popular worldwide relative to defined benefit in a defined benefit plan the company makes promises of a future benefit so the company is saying that when you retire we will look at your salary and give you a certain percentage of that salary that's just one example of a future benefit so the company is promising a benefit and here we don't know or the company doesn't know what that benefit will be because we don't know what that final salary will be we don't know how long that person will live for after retirement so you have these people called actuaries who make lots of assumptions and they come up with numbers we don't need to go into the details but simplistically assumptions are made and based on those assumptions the company calculates a obligation so that is called a pension obligation it is essentially the present value of the future payments that the company expects to make okay that's called a pension obligation now how does a company meet those obligations what most companies do is set up a pension fund this pension fund is also called the plan assets companies put money into this fund and then the pension liabilities or obligations are paid from this fund as you might imagine the accounting for defined benefits is very difficult and from a an analyst perspective when you look at balance sheets and income statements you need to be able to interpret what companies are doing and in this segment we will just very briefly cover the most important points and as i've said before this will be covered in detail at level 2 an important concept is that of funded status as i just said plan assets these represent the the fund that the company creates in order to meet the future obligation the value of that fund let's say is 
Now that fund might consist of stocks, bonds, other investments, but it will have a certain value today. That value is the value of the plan assets. Then you have the defined benefit obligation. This is the present value of what the company believes all its obligations will be. Let's say that the present value of those obligations is 110. And obviously this 110 is based on several assumptions. This is giving you a negative number. It is saying that the obligations are more than the plan asset. So what we have here is a net pension liability. Why? Because the liability or the obligation is more than the asset. So you have what's called an underfunded plan or you have a net pension liability. Most companies that have pension plans are in this situation. If the plan assets are greater than the obligation, then you say you have an overfunded plan or you have a net pension asset. Now, this is an asset or a liability. So it is reported on your balance sheet dates. Let's say you have a pension liability that is, the liability is 10 at the start of the period. End of the period, the liability goes up. When the liability increases, is that a expense? Yes, it is. Increase in liability is a expense. Now, that expense or that increase in liability needs to be shown either on the income statement as a loss or an expense or in OCI. Remember when we were discussing OCI, one of the components had something to do with pension. Now this is a fairly complicated area which we will discuss in level 2, but when your pension obligation increases, then some part is shown in the income statement, some part is shown in OCI. And I really don't think you need to know the details right now, just recognize the high level picture. The pension expense under IFRS has three components, employee service costs, net interest expense or income and remeasurements. Very briefly, if a company has a pension plan, then most of those pension plans have something to do with how long people work. And people sort of earn their pension benefits based on their work, how much time they've spent with the company. So the change in the pension amount based on people working, that is called the employee service cost. The interest expense is a pension obligation at the start of a period multiplied by a rate. And if you think about it, how is interest expense calculated? It is the liability at the start of a period multiplied by a rate. If pension obligation is a liability, and you multiply that by a rate, you will get a certain expense. And remeasurements, I will skip. You really don't need to know that at this stage. Under US GAAP, you don't have three components. You have five components. So notice that I'm skipping over a lot of details here because I know that you will have to worry about them at level two. Here, you just need to know the basics. And let's see if you can do this example. What we have here is a pension obligation is equal to 100. The plan assets are equal to 90. So do we have a net asset or a net liability? We have a net liability equal to 10. So under both US GAAP and IFRS, on the balance sheet, we will show a net pension liability of 10. And then in the footnotes and disclosures, there will be lots of detail about where this 10 comes from. Okay, coming close to the end of this reading, evaluating solvency. Now, all these ratios should look familiar. What is solvency? It is the ability of a company to meet long-term obligations. That's what we've been talking about over here, long-term debt, long-term obligations, long-term liabilities. How do you evaluate whether a company will be able to meet those obligations? You look at two kinds of ratios, solvency ratios and coverage ratios, and you've seen these before. Debt to assets, 
debt to capital. So all these ratios are given here. You've seen them before. Just memorize these ratios and recognize that high is bad in the sense that a high debt to asset ratio means that you have a lot of debt relative to your assets. And these ratios, as we've discussed before, need to be looked at in the context of the industry of that particular company. And then coverage ratios. Interest coverage is EBIT divided by interest payments. Here you actually would want a high ratio because, so here high is good. Why? Because you want a high operating income relative to interest payments. Earlier we had seen this expression, EBIT plus lease payments divided by interest payments plus lease payments and I sort of went over it very fast. Now this concept should make sense because you have studied leases. What is the concept? If you even take this ratio over here, the top one, what, what is EBIT? It's your earnings before interest. So you are looking at how much money is a company generating before making any interest payments. And then you have to divide by interest payments. So it is saying how much money is a company making relative to interest payments. If you think about lease payments, are lease payments an obligation just the way interest payments are an obligation? They are. But is the lease payment included in your operating expense? It is. All right. So what you want to see is how much money are you making without counting that lease payment. Without counting the lease payment, you then add back the lease payment to your operating income and then you divide by your obligation. What's your obligation? It is the interest payments plus the lease payments. So conceptually, both these ratios are very similar. You use this ratio when you have a lot of lease payments. All right, that brings us to the end of this reading. I'll just summarize the main points. We talked about bonds. With bonds, what are the most important points? You need to recognize what to do when a bond is issued. You can either have a par bond, a discount bond, or a premium bond. The relationship between the coupon rate and the effective interest rate is critical. If the coupon rate is high relative to the effective interest rate, then you have a, a premium bond because what is happening here is the investor is getting more money relative to the effective interest rate, so he's willing to pay more for the bond. If this is less than, then we'll have a discount bond. Amortization refers to the process where we bring the value of the bond down to par value and you need to understand what's happening with the interest expense and you need to understand how the coupon payments are being categorized. Then we talked about leases. You need to understand that there is a lessee perspective and a lessor perspective. The lessee is the entity that is using the machine. You should learn the advantages of leasing, and this is more from the perspective of operating leases. And then the accounting for operating leases and finance leases. Understand those tables that I presented. Pensions, I don't think, is overly important at level one, but just know the basics. I think the most important point is the concept of the funded status or whether a company has a net pension liability or net pension assets. These are shown as a single line item on the balance sheet. And then the details are given in the footnotes. And then solvency, you need to know the ratios. You see the ratios here, and you've seen the ratios in earlier readings. Go over the curriculum summary. Do the learning objectives. Just see the learning objectives and make sure that you can say something sensible about each one of them. Examples in this particular reading, I think, are fairly difficult. If you have time, you can go through the examples. But if you don't have time, then definitely do all the practice problems in the curriculum. They are exam-type questions. And then do practice questions from other sources as well.